there's an important class of statistical problems it behooves us to talk about now called hypothesis testing. So let's turn our attention to that for a while. Statisticians talk about testing hypotheses and they sometimes talk about hypothesis tests or tests of significance. But really all that we're dealing with in this case is a problem in simple decision theory, if you will. We have a simple decision problem and the only point that has to be raised is to come up with a decision, yes or no, a relative to some particular hypothesis. So let's go on and see if we can make this a little bit more succinct. I want you to imagine that we have experienced an observation Y uh, drawn from a normal distribution and that this observation Y it turns out to equal 17. Okay, so here's the event, y is equal to 17. That's happened to us, that's for sure, that belongs to us. And let me tell you something else, that this is an event which was spawned by a normal distribution with a variance equal to nine. That is to say the standard deviation of this normal distribution is equal to three. And so here we have the standard deviation of the distribution is equal to three. Now you'll recall earlier I talked about the standard deviation being the scaling parameter. So I have to construct a normal distribution here and I have to sort of push it up and so on. So the distance out to the point of inflection on the curve is equal to three units. And as luck would have it, I uh, have such a distribution here and you'll notice that by golly, the distance from the mean out to the point of inflection on that curve is three units. And so we have a normal distribution here appropriately scaled. Okay, now we have the problem of doing a test of hypotheses. We've got all the ingredients needed. I've told you the event, and we know what the standard deviation of our normal distribution function is. Now let's set up a hypothesis. The idea is the following. Someone comes in and postulates a value for eta. Eta is unknown. He merely postulates a value for eta. So I have over here a suggestion box, uh, chock full of various and sundry values for eta. And so there's a suggestion, and the trick will be a value of eta will be postulated, will be hypothesized. And on the basis of a probabilistic argument, which we are shortly going to do, we're going to make up our mind whether we're going to accept or reject the hypothesis. The hypothesis is either going to be in or out. We're going to end up believing it or not believing it. This is a very black and white sort of reaction to take towards the postulated value, but that's the way the mathematical equipment is set up. Okay, suppose and Cummins comes up to you and says, I think the mean of this distribution is equal to 20. How do you proceed? Well, what that would require us to do is locate the distribution at 20. There we go. So there's our normal distribution set equal to 20. And now the trick is as follows. Let's determine the probability of the event given that eta is equal to 20. And how would we proceed to do that? Well, that's variations on a theme, isn't it? What we ought to do is go and evaluate the normal deviate appropriate to this particular problem. So if we come back here now, we have a completely new problem relative to our, uh, our, uh, our calculations. We have to calculate the normal deviate appropriate to this particular problem. And what will it be, I wonder? Well, now, you've probably figured it out long before this. Y is equal to 17. And the mean in this case is equal to 20. And the standard deviation of the events is equal to 3. So that's easy enough. 17 minus 20 divided by 3, uh, that comes out equal to minus 1. And now I'm up with a situation where I have a normal deviate equal to minus 1. And the trick is, what's the probability that I'll get such a normal deviate or something less? And so I'll be interested in determining the area under the curve. And we've looked that up beforehand, and we find out that the probability that we will observe a value of z less than or equal to minus 1, which is the same thing as finding out what the probability of y is less than or equal to 17. That probability is 0 0.158. Now, when you think about 0 0.158, that's about 1 sixth. And really, that's not a very extraordinary uh, sort of phenomenon. The odds are 1 5, and it's not a particularly rare event. And so we find this an acceptable value for eta in the light of the data. And that leads me to do what? Uh, on the basis of the high probability level, which that per permitted the observation to have, I declare this an acceptable value for the mean, and I say it's accepted. We'll throw it in the acceptance box. <clears throat> okay, let's try another problem. Suppose and someone comes up and tells you that uh, the mean, aha, uh -huh, is equal to 25. And what would your attitude be towards that postulated value of the mean? 
Well, this would require you to locate the distribution at 25. And now I'd have to calculate the normal deviant. Z is equal to Y, 17, minus the mean, 25, divided down by the standard deviation. If you go through all those calculations, it turns out that Z turns out to be minus 2.67. And I've looked up the probability that Z will be less than minus 2.67, and as you imagine, it's a mighty rare event. The probability that Z is less than minus 2.67 is something like 4 in 1,000. So that tells us that the probability of this event given this location for the mean, is also 4 in 1,000, 0. 0.004. And by golly, that is indeed a rare event. And as a consequence of this, I reject the hypothesis. I declare that hypothesis is contradicted by the data. I throw it out. Okay? Now, all of this brings us uh, to an argument about what the devil do we mean by a rare event. And so henceforth in this course, gang, we're going to do the following. We're going to define a rare event as an event with probability 0.05 or something less. So a rare event from now on is defined. The probability of the event will have to be less than 5% in order for the event to be called a rare event. Now, this is arbitrary, some will argue. And I say, yes, it is arbitrary, but it's been established by long practice. It's a good, conservative, engineering-like limit uh, definition for a rare event. If we were in a medical environment, perhaps we'd like to define a rare event as 1 in 10,000 or 1 in 100,000 for, uh, for other sorts of reasons. But in general, we will always define a rare event as 0.05. You know, there are engineers who define rare events, anything that comes off less than 50%, but they're out. We're establishing it at 5% from this point on in time. Okay, let's try another problem. Now, the trick will be, since we've defined a rare event, what's the value of z associated with leaving 5% in the tail of the curve? And we can get a geometric appreciation of what this means uh, as follows. And we see here on the board a... Uh, normal curve, and you'll notice the value of z, which leaves 5% in the tail of the curve, is 1.64. This tells us that if ever we observe a value of z equal to 1.64 or something larger, we know we'll be experiencing a rare event. And similarly, z could come up negative, and so on the other tail of the curve, if ever we see a value of z less than minus 1.64, that will also be determined or called a rare event. So now the rules are pretty clear. All we can do is calculate the normal deviate. If that blooming value of z comes out greater than 1.64 or less than minus 1.64, out with the hypothesis. Let's try another example. Suppose someone comes in and says, I think 8 is 12. OK, what would we do? Well, we'd have to locate the distribution at 12. And now you find me constructing the normal deviate. Z is equal to Y minus eta divided by sigma. So Y minus eta divided by sigma would come out equal to what? 5 thirds, 1.67. 1.67 is larger than 1.64. This is the value of Z which falls in the critical region, in the gray region in that curve that you saw previously. And hence, that's a value of Z which is a rare event. Therefore, our event's a rare event. Therefore, what's our decision about that location for eta? No siree. That's a value of eta which is contradicted by the data. We could try another quick problem. Suppose someone came up and said that um, eta was 18. How would you feel about that? Well, that's easy enough. We quickly locate it at 18. We calculate the normal deviate. The normal deviate comes out equal to 0.33. By gum, that's a heck of a lot less than 1.64. And so the event is not a rare event in the light of the data. And uh, in, the, in the light of the, the, the positive value of eta is not a rare event in the light of the data. And so that we decide that eta equal 18 is indeed an acceptable value. Okay. Now, just to quickly review what we've done, right? In order to do a test of significance of we have...